Nigeria is currently grappling with a significant fuel crisis as the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, otherwise known as the NNPCL, has revealed a $6 billion debt to petrol suppliers. This financial burden has disrupted fuel dist distribution, leading to long queues at petrol stations and soaring prices. Many Nigerians are feeling the pinch. Since 12, and this is to 4 also, and uh, it's really bad. On every other day, this is how we suffer. This, is a, this queue has been there for more than a month now or so. You know, the situation in Nigeria is just so pathetic. Like, we, we are frustrated. Since I came to this place, since 11 a.m., and this is almost to 4, I have not gotten food. And I, I ended up not going to work today. If you see, you see that I'm dressed up to go to work. So I did not go to work today. I ended up my work today in the film session. The productive uh, day has gone. I, will not be, I, I, I couldn't do anything throughout today. I, I just went to the office just to register my name and to get the fuel. And the fuel is not forthcoming. I've been here and they are calling me from the office. I can't leave and I don't have fuel to even go home. So I have to stay. The voices of Nigerians. Well, to help us navigate the complexities of this situation and understand its broader implications on Nigeria's oil and gas industry, I am joined by Sam Ayboni, uh, energy and investment solicitor. He's joining us live from our studios in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital. Great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, this is an honor and pleasure. It's nice to be on your show. Great. Uh, the NNPC has given us every excuse under the sun. Uh, logistics challenges, bad roads, even lightning and thunder. And now they are citing financial strain. But this is coming barely weeks after announcing a record 3.3 trillion Naira profits for the year of 2023. How do we reconcile this? Is this an accounting anomaly or are there deeper financial troubles at the NNPCL? Well, um, if you look at the uh, financials since they went um, uh, limited liability, they have shown um, strong numbers in terms of uh, showing profits. And I think last, uh, last year in 2023, they reported a 3.2 uh, trillion Naira profit. Um, it's surprising that they decided to report their financials in Naira, considering that it's an oil sector where everybody reports in dollars. But there was something that was captured in um, in their financials. Uh, the cost of sales uh, was very high, and also they indicated that they had done, they had some a lot of obligations in forward sales, and the obligations they had in forward sales were also in the region of three point. Uh, something trillion. So technically, it's, uh, there was already an indication that they were not uh, doing as well as uh, everybody would expect in financial terms. And for a company in the oil and gas industry, where other countries around the world and their peers like Saudi Aramco, uh, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, the Chinese Oil Company, were reporting very high profits in hundreds of billions of dollars. It uh, shows that uh, NNPC was not uh, in a very healthy place. Some would call this abracadabra. It's like NNPC has been performing a lot of magic. But given that we have seen this issue that you have raised, uh, do you think that the NNPC has been transp transparent enough with Nigerians about the real challenges they are facing? Or is there a deliberate attempt to obscure the truth? What exactly is going on with the NNPCL, in your own opinion? Well, it's, uh, I think it's creative uh, um, accounting. Uh, I think the numbers have been before us, and our shareholders uh, of NNPC talking about their, their board and the shareholders that represent us, they have been a lot of questions that their financials should have asked. And NNPC's uh, leadership, uh, the GMD, has over time always given the impression that the company was in profit and was doing well. But looking at their financial figures, I think uh, their press statement that they released has put uh, to pace that NNPC is really in a, uh, almost insolvent. 
So what should be the response of the government at this time, uh, Sam? Uh, a lot of people are expecting that heads should roll in the NNPC. But would that be fair, given that uh, basic mathematics, NNPC as the sole importer of petrol has been selling way below the uh, cost of importation and has been making up what they now call the shortfall subsidy or under recovery, as we like to call uh, these terminologies in Nigeria. What should be the government's response at this time, Sam? I think uh, that's a very brilliant question, and I think that's a million dollar question that is on everybody's mind. I want us to go back to uh, 1977, when uh, Obasa created the uh, NNPC. I think times have changed. At that time, there were not a lot of Nigerians involved in the oil and gas industry. But today, we have a lot of national oil companies, we have a lot of Nigerians who have worked in the IOCs. And I think the capacity uh, to develop the industry is here. Nigerian industry has gone. The Nigerian Content um, Act has delivered for the industry. And I think it's time to revisit uh, NMPC and the structure of NMPC that we have. Um, in terms of, uh, I think there are three levers. There is revenue, there is investment, and there is expense. Now, for revenue, I think uh, that has to do with about efficiency, how uh, uh, um, NMPC operates uh, its interest on our behalf. Um, I think both uh, NMPC and I think also the Minister of Petroleum, who is our president, have some questions to answer. It is no secret that uh, most of the investment have been coming into the industry have been stalled because government has been slow in granting uh, consent when investors want to come in. And the approvals for major projects have not come as quickly as we have expected. And that has led to a reduction in investment in the industry. And you can understand how that uh, affects uh, revenue uh, with the other inefficiencies that we have, crude thefts and the stuff. So we have uh, a problem on the revenue side. We have a problem on the investment side. Investments are not coming in. in. And looking at NFC's financial statement, we also have a, a big issue which regards their expenses. NFC has shown that they are not efficient. A case in point that everybody talks about every day is the amount of money that was spent with the refiners without producing one drop of diesel or, or PMS. So I think at this time in our nation's history, I think it's left for the Minister of Petroleum, our President, to take a hard look at NNPC and redefine NNPC. And I think all of us as uh, shareholders, we need to have that strong discussion with the federal government and see how we can make uh, NNPC more profitable. Yes, I totally agree with you. But beyond profits, the issue of transparency and accountability with the NNPC uh, seems to come to the fore now and then. Um, we're talking about the cash cow of the country, Sam. Substantial amounts of public funds. So why, is, why does it look as though it is difficult to get the NNPC to be accountable to Nigerians? Uh, a lot of us thought that with the revamping of NNPC to a public limited company, uh, this would have been an issue of the past. Also with the PA, PIA Act. Uh, what do you think really is the problem? Is it, do we have a situation of an old wine in a new bottle in the NNPC issue? So, I, like I said, uh, with regards to the history of NNPC, I think NNPC, as it was initially constructed in 1977, where it wanted Nigerian and Nigerian government to participate in the oil industry, that time has passed. And I think it's now time to implement uh, the PIA to the letter. Um, there are options and what everybody is looking at and talking to is to say when can they take the um, NMPC into the uh, capital market. That would uh, help a lot because for them to be able to go into the capital market, the issues around uh, corporate governance, the political interference in uh, NMPC, because NMPC always has a, an excuse for either providing subsidy or trying to determine the fund of PS. And if they go into uh, the stock market and capital market and they have proper corporate governance, I think these bodies around uh, providing a freebie in terms of uh, PMS and the opaque way in which the account is, uh, 
is uh, handled and there will be a disjoint between this whole issue around appropriation, federation accounts, and how APC is run. And APC will be able to run like a proper business. We even have examples in Nigeria with the LNG. So there are models that we can run that are working. We have uh, Nigerian um, independents who are running the businesses very profitably. There are many examples we can give. There is Seplat, Walter Smith, there is ND Western. So there are a lot of Nigerian companies that are running in this space and are making profit. So NMPC cannot be an exception. And the whole idea to equate NMPC to the oil and gas industry is also a problem in itself. And I think government should revisit its participation in the, the oil and gas business and step back a little to stay in the space of regulator and let, allow NMPC to run as a proper uh, a company. I think it's, uh, it's not rocket science. There is need for um, a regime change in NMPC to in inject people that have uh, provided support and built uh, successful oil and gas businesses in Nigeria to take on the mantle and see whether we can take NMPC to the next level. It is critical. NMPC has been our cash cow. The implication of NMPC's insolvency to the Nigerian economy cannot be emphasized. I think uh, I was surprised that with the news there was no much that we had not even gone into a, a more um, a panic mode with how we address it. I think the government should put this at the front burner. It is important that in a time where everybody is making uh, windfield profit for the oil and gas uh, business globally, that NMPC cannot make a profit from oil and gas business. I mean, let's talk about the issue at hand, uh, really, Sam. Long queues. I wonder if you have petrol uh, to move you from point A to point B, Sam, without having to join those long, unending queues in Lagos. But here in Abuja, I can tell you for free that those queues are not going anywhere. The issue at ground is that people are queuing to get this petrol. And when they do get them, the prices are different. Nobody's regulating that. Uh, do you think, as some would suggest, that perhaps this is a move by the NNPC and the government to increase the price of petrol? Does that make any economic sense to you at this time? Is that the solution? Well, well if you read in between the lines of the press statement that NNPC released, where they said that they had um, obligations to petrol uh, suppliers globally, it's just a first step for you to tell that they want to increase the price. Their simple message from that press release is that they cannot continue to, they cannot afford to sell petrol price at uh, the regulated price. So it's just a, it just, we're just waiting for them to tell us what the new price is. It will not be unexpected for, so I think it's the, the fuel queues, the non-availability of the product are all part of the same story. And I think uh, at some point, uh, NMPC will tell us what the new price of uh, PMS will be. And once we have a new price, I'm sure the, uh, the queues will disappear. I, and I know that you understand the dynamics of the market, Sam. So I just want to ask you, uh, because there's been a lot of discussion around whether Nigerians are paying enough, if we should pay more for petrol. And considering the market value of petrol, and then we have to export the crude and import it back and all of those dynamics. Uh, from your perspective, how much do you think Nigerians uh, would likely pay for petrol to see these queues disappear for good? So for me, I think it goes back to the issue you raised earlier on around transparency. Uh, we have an administration that started off to say that they had removed subsidy. So I think it's really a shame and a disappointment that we're having this discussion today. If uh, subsidy was removed, then why is NMPC owing uh, uh, foreign petrol suppliers for supplying fuel? Why did they continue to provide uh, subsidy irrespective of the fact that subsidy was not provided for in the budget? And the government had clearly said that they were not going to do subsidy. So why are we having a subsidy discussion? So I think this whole uh, dishonesty, for a lack of a better phrase to call it, and lack of transparency in the pricing and funding of uh, subsidy really needs to be addressed. And I, hope, I would have expected that the National Assembly will have stepped in as uh, the, with the oversight function to ask these hard questions. But I think the National Assembly that we have today 
is more interested in approving anything that the executive puts before them. Thank you, Sam. In addition to those questions you have ruled out, I, I mean, we could add more. For instance, why is NNPC still the sole importer of petrol? So that's for me, and that's the real question to say what is NNPC's role in today's economy. I don't think NNPC should have the responsibility of uh, funding uh, subsidy for petrol. I don't think that is their role, and I think it's very dishonest for both uh, NMPC, their leadership, and the Minister of Petroleum to have used NMPC in this, in, this, in this way. So I think we need to stop it. We need to refocus NMPC. If we can break that monopoly and uh, get them to, pro or to be listed on the stock market, have proper governance, and run like a proper company, I think that's the way forward for NMPC. This, now that uh, we have come to this point where they are insolvent and as an organization they cannot provide uh, money, they have become a financial risk to the Nigerian state. So there's something that needs to be done very quickly. So it does look like, I mean, no matter the nomenclature, we call it subsidy, under recovery, shortfall, it doesn't seem to go anywhere. And I want to ask you, Sam, because you have admitted that um, there might likely be an increase in the pump price of petrol to reflect the rea reality of the market, correct? So if we do agree that, that there needs to be an adjustment, what viable alternatives do you see for balancing that, that to increase pump petrol, the price of uh, petrol at the pumps? How do we balance that with that, uh, with making it affordable for ordinary Nigerians. So my question really is, we have a situation on ground where um, experts like you say we still buy petrol for cheap, and because of that, the NNPC cannot make profits because they have to keep paying the shortfall subsidies on the recovery, act, whatever you like to call them. So if we do increase the price, how do we ensure that ordinary Nigerians who are already uh, you know, burdened, overburdened by the economic crisis at hand, how do we ensure that it's still affordable for them? So for me, I say that uh, the Minister of Petroleum and President should live up to his, uh, his, his, uh, what he had told us that he has going to remove subsidy and let him remove uh, subsidy and allow uh, marketers bring a product in and price it. Now, what will happen is like what happened in telecommunication, what happened to diesel. At some point, the product will find its price. Nigerians might change the way they use uh, uh, petroleum, but at some point, uh, we will have uh, some adjustment to the reality. Where we are now, we've gotten to a point where we have uh, NMPC that produces most of the foreign revenue for Nigeria being insolvent. So. We need to do something around it. We can't, it's obvious that we can't continue afford, afford, uh, affording to provide diesel. So for me, I don't think it's an issue of what the price of uh, PMS will be, but it will be full implementation of the subsidy. Uh, the PIA says remove subsidy. The president says he has removed subsidies. So there's no reason for NMPC to continue sub providing subsidy for oil. I think it's, uh, it's illegal for them to do that, and that must stop immediately. I know you say it's not about the price, but again, I want to ask you, I mean, as the expert, um, how much do you think Nigerians should really pay for petrol? Um, just recently, The Punch did an exclusive story around some countries surrounding us, including Benin, Niger, and Cameroon, and all of that. And they found out that, you know, price of petrol, like we have heard several times, are very expensive. And so the smuggling out of Nigeria you know, profits, in a way, those countries. People would rather buy smuggled petrol out of Nigeria because they're cheaper than the petrol in their country. And that's a story The Punch has done just very recently. So I wanted to ask you, really, Sam, uh, currently petrol prices go be between 630 to about 1,000 in different places in Nigeria. How much, really, do you think is sustainable for us? How much should Nigerians pay for petrol? Well, well, for me, um, I, I, like I said, like you are aware, I'm a lawyer by training, and although uh, 
I spend a lot of time in energy and investment. You will understand that economics and pricing of products is not uh, my best suit. And I would not want to make uh, a price based on speculation. But from the press release that NMPC has, has given, it is clear that we cannot continue to get fired at 600 because NMPC was paying the difference. Now, whether that is going to be 1,200, 1,500, I really do not know. But the point I'm, I will say is that as an investor for little, what I found out is that even if the price initially goes up, it will encourage more people to invest in the space and over time, the product will become uh, uh, stable in price and, and cheaper. We have a lot of inefficiencies in, uh, in the pricing of uh, petroleum products. These products are not uh, refined locally, so we have the transport costs, we have the shipping costs, we have the costs on tank farms, and all those costs are, are that additional costs. So if uh, uh, the NMPC is able to give the local refineries to an entity that is able to operate and manage them more efficiently, if Dangote is able to get uh, fee stock for its refinery, if a lot more of the modular refineries come on stream, then the price of that will also affect the the price of oil. So I think it's not just about uh, our current state where NMPC is the sole importer of oil and gets it from foreign refineries that should be the terminal of price. There are other levers that can be, that can be pushed to get uh, a PMS at the right price. So for me, it's really about the right price that is market driven than to have NMPC as the sole importer and subsidizing the product. So really, it's uh, about uh, aligning PMS to find this right price. I hear you, market forces, they say. Um, very quickly, Sam, before I let you go, you talked about efficiency and inefficiency in the system. Well, inefficiency is a term that is synonymous with our refineries. And recently, the NNPC, as you've just mentioned, have decided to look for uh, private companies to run the Wari and Kaduna refinery, uh, refining plants. Do you have any reservations? Some have raised questions about it. Well, so for me, uh, I think uh, the whole idea of uh, announcing that they wanted to do an operate and maintain contract for the refinery for me is a big joke because there's no way the refinery will not have an operate and maintain contract. So really, it's the commercial structure, that, uh, commercial struct construct that is really more important than who is uh, operating and, and maintaining it. Because anyway, refinery should be operated and maintained. And they wouldn't have spent all that amount of money in turnaround uh, maintenance and not have thought about how the refinery is going to be operated and maintained. So I think even the whole announcement and operate and maintain does not even address the issues about the efficiency of the refinery. And we need to, 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 um, to get an MPC into an, a space where it's more efficient. And for me, uh, based on information and data that NMPC produced, that is why I am coming to the conclusion that NMPC is not run efficiently. If you look at their financial statements for 2023, their cost of sale has gone up astronomically. They are unable, with all the money they have spent over the years, to turn out to repair the refiner, have been able to get the refineries up and running. So I think it's clear that the NMPC is unable to run the refineries and the confirmation has come with the announcement that they are looking for somebody to support them to operate and maintain the machinery. So with all this uh, evidence that from source data from NMPC, I don't think it's a debate that NMPC is inefficient and that NMPC needs help. We do hope that they get the help NMPC, they need in serious reforms. In, in all of us' interest, we really hope that it get that help. Sam Iboni, Energy and Investment Solicitor, thank you so much for being on the show today. We do appreciate your time on Prime Time.